In addition to Lounge Lizard, X3 also comes with Strum Acoustic Session, the introduction edition of the acoustic guitar simulation. Again, drag it from the browser into the track view, and using the default settings, a simple instrument track is inserted, and the acoustic strum interface opens. Let's take a look at it. Down the left hand side is a list of presets, and above this, controls for adding more banks and selecting those presets. There is also a menu for even greater control and options. Double click on a preset to load it. Toward the right is the main interface which has three sections. At the top is the effects section for shaping the final output. In the centre are controls for influencing how the guitar sounds, and at the bottom are controls for playing the synth, either using an attached controller such as a MIDI keyboard, or using MIDI clips. Let's look at each section in more detail. We'll start with the sound generation section that includes a detection and voicing module. Usually a chord is constructed differently on a guitar to how it is on a piano or keyboard. These chord constructions are known as voicing and affect how a chord sounds, even if it's the same chord. The detection section takes the incoming chord and attempts to play that chord how a guitarist would. The resulting shape is displayed in the fretboard graphic. The incoming signal might be from a keyboard or from a MIDI file. MIDI files can be loaded and played using the loop player toward the bottom right. Drag and drop a MIDI file here to load it, or select one from the loop browser, accessed by clicking on the arrow at the top right of the loop player. Click on the play icon to start loop playback. Alternatively, play a chord using an attached keyboard. The notes for the chord fretting must be between MIDI notes 40 and 71. Notes 72 and above are used for manual strumming and picking. Once the incoming MIDI notes are detected, the settings here control what happens next. If Auto is selected in the strumming section, the chord will be played as soon as it is detected. We'll look at manual strumming shortly. The notes played by strum are displayed on the fretboard. These will be how a guitarist would play it rather than the actual notes used to trigger strum. The speed and velocity of the strum are controlled by the two rotaries beneath. On its slowest setting, the strum is almost an arpeggiated line. At its quickest, a short stab. How the chord is voiced depends on the setting under the chord heading. If root is selected, the lowest note in the chord will always be the root note of the chord, regardless of how the notes are played. For example, play from low to high, G, C and E on the keyboard, and the strum will play a C, with C as the lowest note. Change this setting to lowest and play the same three notes, and strum now plays a C, but this time with G in the bass. The time setting here adjusts the time the detection phase waits before handing the detected signal to the voicing phase. This allows a short time for notes that aren't played at exactly the same moment to be considered part of the chord rather than individual notes. As well as adjusting how quickly a chord is strummed and the voicing used, a guitarist will also sometimes only play a few of the strings when strumming. There is a range control at the bottom of the fretboard to control which strings are played. Click drag either end and adjust as required. Now let's take a look at playing using manual strumming. As previously mentioned, MIDI notes 72 and above are used for this. Hold down chord notes with the left hand on a keyboard and play note 72 for a straightforward down strum. This can also be played via a MIDI file using the same notes in a MIDI file format and loaded into the player, or on the strum track in Sona. Obviously, Sona's transport will need to be running if the MIDI clip is on the track. Note 74 plays an upstroke. A basic strumming pattern can be set up using just these two keys. But guitarists use many other techniques. Palm muting, for instance, is a common technique where the right hand is laid gently across the strings while strumming. Notes 73 and 75 play the down and up palm notes, respectively. 
A muffled stroke is similar to a palm mute, but the strings are even more muted, resulting of a more percussive type of sound. Notes 78 and 80 play these downstrokes and upstrokes. Another technique is to mute all strings after a chord is struck. Note 82 is used to achieve this. The highest four strings are played using notes 79, 81, 83 and 84 respectively. These are referred to as the arpeggiator keys. Notes 76 and 77 are used for the lower two strings, but which note plays which string is governed by the following. Note 76 will always play the lowest note in the chord. Note 77 plays an alternate bass. This will usually be the fifth of the chord. If the lowest note is played on the sixth string, the alternate bass will be played on the fifth string. If the bass note is on the fourth or fifth string, the alternate bass will be played on the fifth or sixth string respectively. If no fifth is played in the chord, the alternate bass will be the same note as the bass note. Hammer-ons and pull-offs are common techniques used by guitarists. A hammer-on is when a higher note is played when a lower one is sounding by hammering a finger down on the already sounding string. A pull-off is when the finger is snapped off the string, forcing a lower note to play. Both of these techniques are possible by holding a note down and then playing one higher. The notes do need to be within two semitones of each other though. A trill is just an extension of this, a hammer-on followed by a pull-off in quick succession. A very fast picking technique known as tremolo picking is also possible. Just hold one note down and then use any two of the arpeggiator keys and rapidly key first one then the other. The tuning module allows tuning to be adjusted either up or down by a semitone or increased by an octave. The pitch wheel module assigns the pitch wheel to either string bends or slides, while range controls the range of the bend or slide. If a chord is played, only the lowest note is bent, but slide does affect the whole chord. If your keyboard transmits aftertouch data, it can be used to bend strings and the depth of the bend is controlled with the depth parameter. Now we've seen how to play it, let's move up to the main sound generation section and look at the options there. In this section are the parameters that are used to simulate the various string and body types, as well as hand positioning that a guitarist uses to create different nuances of the basic sound. One of these is the type of strings used, and whether they are picked with fingers or a pick. These variations can be simulated using the guitar module with settings for both steel and nylon strings with either pick or fingers. You can hear the tone changes as this control is adjusted. Another technique used to produce a subtle tone change is to adjust the picking position in relation to the fretboard and bridge. Close to the bridge produces a metallic dry tone and that becomes less metallic and more full as the position moves over the sound hole towards the fretboard. The position knob controls this with fully anti-clockwise being at the bridge. Turning the control clockwise simulates moving the picking position more and more towards the fretboard. Another element of the guitar that affects tone is the size, shape and wood used for the body and top. The tone control is used to alter the timbre of the sound. Moving it clockwise increases the decay time and therefore presence of the high frequencies compared to the low, resulting in a brighter sound. Turning it anti-clockwise reduces high frequency presence and therefore produces a bassy tone. The global control affects the way the instrument is played from a keyboard rather than the sound per se. Turning it clockwise increases the dynamics from the keyboard, anti-clockwise decreases them. Finally, at the top of the interface is the processing area consisting of an EQ and reverb module. Both are switchable using the relevant switch at the top of each module. The EQ consists of a low cut or high pass filter and that cuts frequencies beneath the cutoff frequency. 
The actual cutoff frequency is adjusted with the control. Fully anti-clockwise, it is effectively off at 16 Hz. Turning it clockwise increases the cutoff frequency, reducing the base end at higher frequencies of up to 1000 Hz as it increases to its maximum. The low control is a low shelf filter with a corner frequency of 500 Hz. The 12 o'clock position is neutral with no cut or boost. Turn it anti-clockwise to cut and clockwise to boost. There's up to 15 decibels of cut or boost available. A low shelf filter boosts or cuts all frequencies beneath the corner frequency by the same amount. The mid filter is a peak or bell type with variable centre frequency. The frequency ranges from 120 to 2500 Hz, again with up to 15 decibels of cut or boost. A peak filter boosts or cuts the centre frequency by the greatest amount, with cut or boost on surrounding frequencies gradually reducing the further they are from the centre frequency. The high filter is a shelf type. This too has up to 15 decibels of cut or boost and has a corner frequency of 3 kHz. The reverb unit produces the familiar spatial effect heard on nearly all recorded material, simulating how sounds appear to us in the natural environment of a room, hall or other space. There are five basic spaces available. They are club, studio, hall, large hall and small room with some other variations on the hall, large hall and club settings. In addition, there are controls for mix, which controls the blend of processed and unprocessed sounds. Decay adjusts the time for the reverb reflections to fall to silence, and the colour control works in conjunction with a decay control. And that's Strum Acoustic Session, a great soft synth to simulate guitars with.